How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Wednesday on the show, everyone's favorite day of the week. Everybody on the chat is all excited about an hour of NXT talk. I'm not going to talk about NXT for an hour, are you kidding me? But I will review it as I always do here today. Because they got a big show coming up next week, everybody. Spring something or other. Spring break-in? Break-in? Break-out? Whatever. Anyway, we got that. We got AEW Dynamite tonight. And what we do know for sure about Dynamite, despite uh, besides the five matches that have been announced, is that Hangman Page will not be there. Hangman Page has COVID-19. It will not be on Dynamite tonight. He took to social media Wednesday to announce he will not be on the show. Dynamite is tonight at 8 on TBS, but I will not be there because my face is full of COVID snot. Sorry, please enjoy regardless, he wrote on Twitter. He had a brief stare down with CM Punk after the Punk-Dustin Rhodes match last week. It is going to be Hangman Page versus Punk at the pay-per-view coming up at the NMA. But we still got about a month to build that up, so... I think it's all right if he misses a week. Best of luck to him. And uh, we'll go over the rest of the lineup here in a while as well. Raw ratings killed by the NBA playoffs as always. Got some notes on WWE stadium shows. The inspiration. The former Iconics. Now Cassie Lee and Jesse McKay. Done with pro wrestling for the time being. We'll tell you about that and plenty of other notes as well. If you want to contact us here today, we'll have time for text messages, maybe even phone calls as well. But we'll start with text messages, 425-780-7566 is the phone number, 425-780-7566. You can always email me, brian at wrestlingobserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter, at 4 Online on Cameo. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Russell. Oh, Hi! Wrestling Observer Live, Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Yes, the inspiration. They're done with wrestling for the time being. I don't know what that means, because you know how it is in wrestling. People are done. They almost always come back. Except in the case of myself, I'm fully retired. Inspirations Cassie Lee, Jesse McKay are stepping away from the ring. Statement issued Wednesday. They announced they are, quote, indefinitely stepping away from in-ring action. Lee and McKay have been part of Impact Wrestling since signing with the promotion last October. I want to thank Scott Demore, the entire Impact family, they said. We had, have had such an incredible experience working with the incredible Impact staff and roster. A um, bunch of other stuff here. So all I know is that, uh, like, this is all legit. So they left on very, very good terms. But for the time being, they're leaving wrestling. And what they're going to do, I don't know. But uh, they had their last match this past weekend. Uh, they faced the Influence, and uh, Influence retained their titles. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll find out what the future holds. But And who knows? You know how wrestling is. What will be interesting, I guess, is, is uh, you know, contractually, I mean, you can, you can leave. But uh, if they decide to return to wrestling, presumably, contractually, they would have to return to Impact Wrestling and work out the rest of that contract. So uh, we'll see what they do if they come back. And I don't have anything more to say. That's the update. So best of luck to them. Did Lance run them off? That's what you came up with out of all that. Do you really care? What's your favorite Iconics moment, Brian? So anyway, can we talk about Dynamite here tonight? Sure. We have Akaru Shida, Serena Deeb in a street fight. Lance Archer faces Wardlow. We got an Owen Hart tournament qualifier with Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler with CM Punk doing commentary. At least CM Punk was not exposed to COVID when he had that face-to-face with uh, Hangman Page uh, last week. I've heard nothing about that. We have got Sammy Guevara, Scorpio Sky in a ladder match. And we have Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, Matt, and Nick Jackson against Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Dante Martin, Lee Johnson, and Brock Anderson. So that is the lineup for the show tonight. Probably ain't going to do all that well since we got the NBA, which uh, brutalized Raw on Monday night again. 
Raw did a 1.61 million viewership, one, uh, 0.44 in the 18 to 49 demo. The Brooklyn Nets Boston Celtics game, 3.83 million viewers in a 1.33, 18 to 49. Utah Jazz and Dallas Mavericks, 3.19 million and a 1.17 at 18 to 49. So uh, these these basketball games, they just they kill. They kill everything. Well, it's a normal first to third hour drop. 1.70 million first hour, 1.67 million second hour. Big drop, 1.47 million third hour, although that is the usual drop. And hey, they were out of the 1.3s in that third hour this week, so I guess that's a positive. But that's the that's the raw numbers there. No story. Not I, really. I can keep going, Mike. Then we've got... Well, who, uh, <laughs> what would you like me to add to that? It was very fun watching Brooklyn fail miserably instead of watching... Well, Ron sure, Monday that's night. something now, isn't it? I don't want you to say anything. I'm just <laughs> expecting. You're hurting today, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I got a lot of... Hey, hey, listen. You guys want me to talk about NXT 2.0 for the rest of the show? I can. So nope. <laughs> you can either jump Don't in with some commentary like or, uh, or I'll just continue on here. <laughs> it's ahead. not even a threat. I got a lot I could say about this show. I don't know why everyone hates NXT 2.0 so much. I mean, it's a bad show, but I mean, God, did you guys not live through like WCW Thunder and, and Nitro? Brian, that was 25 years ago. It was, Maybe but my, not. my point is like, <laughs> God, the show's, you know. I mean, it's not a great show, but... And there were some good matches on the show. Hey, Roxy is going to be a star no matter what happens. I don't, know, but sure. I don't know if I'd go that far. Well, but she's very sad. good. Like, she worked <laughs> rings around Mandy Rose. God bless Mandy Rose. But, I mean, we'll get into that later. I'm trying to avoid it. You guys are trying to goad me into it. I'll th- and, you know, here's another thing, by the way. Yes. I'm sure this person's joking, but he goes, I'd rather watch Prime Thunder. Bro, you guys don't get it. Everybody says stuff like that till you actually go back and watch Thunder. Bro, Thunder didn't have a prime. <laughs> you watch you watch three episodes of Thunder and you're gonna be begging, begging to watch NXT 2.0 again. Remember the natural born thrillers? We did I, a lot of that I on NXT lived through 2.0. all of this. <laughs> yeah, all of this. Oh, how easily actually it's not really I mean it was twenty five years ago or whatever, but bro, those Thunders, I'm I'm telling you. Tore you asunder is what happened there with that. The, those thunders did tear me asunder. So let's not have a, you know, it's, it's called rose-colored glasses. You're looking at the past through rose-colored glasses. I I watched it with, with no glasses. I watched it actually as it was. And it was absolutely horrible. And, uh, you know, it's funny. It's like people remember, you know, every now and then there was something funny like, you know, uh, Sid versus the Harris brothers and... One of the Harris brothers said his head almost fell off, and then he adds, that was sad. And stuff like that that was funny. But, bro, you guys don't remember. There was a funny thing that would happen every now and then on the show. The rest of the time, it absolutely sucked. It was not so bad it was good. It was not so bad it was funny. Every now and then a funny thing happened. But that show was 104 hours of thunder over the course of a year. And it wasn't all funny. It was outright bad. So anyway, uh, stadium shows. An increased amount of stadium shows look to be the norm for WWE going forward. WWE will set a company record with eight stadium shows this year. Our own Andrew Zarian reports that running more stadium events is an approach that WWE plans to continue in 2023. So 2022 at eight events. Goal is to make this the new norm. It's a Nick Khan approach when it comes to premium live events. Scalability of stadiums is very beneficial when it comes to having a live audience over 15,000. Event doesn't have to be a sellout of 50,000, but now you have room to do 20 to 35,000 shows more often, leading to higher revenue and a higher level of excitement for the event. Well, that's certainly the idea now, isn't it? But uh, can you put 35,000 people regularly into a stadium. I guess we shall find out. Obviously, if you're doing a Royal Rumble or a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam, but are you going to put 35,000 people in the building for a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view? I guess we shall we shall find out how loyal these traveling fans are for these shows. 
Money in the Bank at Allegiant Stadium. That's the most interesting one for me. You know, SummerSlam, the show that's going to take place in Wales. You know, I don't think they're going to have any problem there. But it's amazing. Money in the Bank at Allegiant Stadium. You know, it's just like, you know, that's going to be a probably a great test, you know, without having a WrestleMania name or a Survivor Series or something like that attached to it. be interesting to see what they actually end up with. And this person asked about, uh, won't they just lie? About, well, of course they're going to lie about the attendance. But the Always. fact is, you're still going to put way more people in than you would running a, a building that seats 15,000. That's the idea here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it will be an experiment. It's all, about, it's all about whether this works out in terms of revenue. Do you have to lower ticket prices to sell 35,000 tickets? Are you going to sell 35,000 tickets? Is it, is it worthwhile to rent the building? And then you do the math, obviously. I'm not a math guy. But uh, if it works, then you continue running at stadiums. And, uh, I mean, the, the big thing is, here's the thing with WWE, everybody. The booking sucks, and they, cre- they can't create stars, okay? They have a very hard time doing that. If the booking were better, they would easily, I believe, sell lots of tickets to stadium shows for their big events. So, you know, is the booking and the star-making ability enough to, you know, sell 35,000 tickets to uh, 10, 15 stadium events every year? We're going to find out. But uh, they certainly could. I'm not saying they can't. They could. A lot of things they could do. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Well, let's talk about NXT. Yay. You know, the thing with this show is the, the, the good workers have good matches. And uh, the non-wrestlers, they practice all week. And then, like, on a good night, it's all right. On a bad night, it ain't all right. And, uh, you know, that, that, I mean, it would be fine, but, like, if you've been following this whole NIL recruitment deal, I mean, the future of the show is more matches like Nikita Lyons and Lash Legend. Did you guys watch this match? It wasn't bad, okay? It certainly was not good. But what it was was uh, two very, very green, and I will call them non-wrestlers because they're not learning to wrestle. They're they're learning to choreograph performances. They are sports entertainers through and through. They, uh, they practice a match for a long time, and then they get in there live, and then they try. And uh, there was a spot in this match that was so funny where they both start hitting the ropes and they both forgot what they're supposed to do. So literally, they're crisscrossing like the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan, but go in the same direction, and they're yelling at each other as they cross to try to tell each other what, what they're supposed to be doing. I was dying. And uh, I just watched a show, and I thought, and I know that USA Network, uh, yeah, I'm sure they want the show live, right? But this show absolutely should not be live. <laughs> this is a developmental show with green non-wrestlers who have to practice their matches and then go out there and, like, do their best. This absolutely, positively, needs to be a taped show if it's going to be on national television. But it's live, and so we get funny moments like this. So, you know, they did the match. Nikita Lyons won with a big kick, and the announcers just, you know, put over that Twitter's exploding every time Nikita Lyons is on TV. And, I mean, it's just so... Just so whatever it is. I mean... That's what this show is. And then we had uh, Tony D'Angelo space, uh, supposed to face Zion Quinn, who uh, who I guess was out of action due to injury. And so he gets uh, set up for a match with Von Wagner, which at least, actually, even then, I don't know who was supposed to be the baby face. Exactly. I guess nobody. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> then we had uh, Roderick Strong is upset that the Creed brothers keep failing. And so uh, he has brought the Viking Raiders from the main roster. They will be facing the Creed Brothers next week, which actually could be a fun match. We had Von Wagner and Tony D'Angelo, and this match was all right. I mean, Tony D'Angelo's had, I mean, at this point, it's probably, I swear to God, like 12 matches. 
And uh, yeah. for a guy with 12 matches, he's doing really good. So, you know, this was not like uh, you're not getting a five star match or anything close, but it was fine. And then, uh, you know, uh, Legato del Fantasma showed up and there was a distraction. Escobar took out D'Angelo's knee with a crowbar. D'Angelo sells and sells. He finally jumps in the ring to break up the count. He gets kicked and pinned by Von Wagner. I mean, the way this was worked, it was like Tony D'Angelo is supposed to be a baby face. But, like, later in the show, you know, Legato del Fantasma were baby faces. But I think they're all heels. I am so baffled watching this show. We had a Toxic Attraction segment with uh, Rock, the former Roxy. She'll always be the former Roxy to me. This set up a match with Mandy Rose tonight. I thought for sure they'd do Gigi Dolan next because she beat J.C. Jane last week. But no, it's just this week it's going to be uh, going to be Mandy Rose. Fallon Henley, uh, they're going to be doing a, uh, a match later, a, a six-person with uh, Legato. And that one woman who we just cannot identify, and they never identify her. They never give us her name. She walked by, and uh, Brooks Jensen, uh, he's all distracted, you know, because he's got some problems down there. And uh, he was yelled at for that. We had Grayson Waller. So they got this guy, Nathan Frazier, from NXT UK. He's supposed to debut. And Grayson Waller comes out, and he interrupts the debut, and he starts cutting this promo, and he starts burying Nathan Frazier for having a, a horrible haircut. And, you know, here's the thing, everybody. When you're a baby face and the heel's telling you that your haircut sucks, and with all due respect, your haircut sucks, it might be time to get a new haircut. So uh, then, for some reason, uh, Andre Chase and Bodie Hayward, which is a great name. It's one of the rare great names in this company. They're in the crowd, and then they get in the ring, and they distract Grayson... And then, you know, Nathan Frazier jumps off the top with a dropkick and then does a bunch of spots. So I guess, I guess Chase University are baby faces, but I don't know why. And and uh, Nathan Frazier is now aligned with them. And uh, he's a, you know what this is? For those of you that watched before, y- before uh, y'all gave up, what they're doing with Nathan Frazier, it is exactly what they did with Kurt Stallion. Exactly. Oh, no. Except Nathan Frazier has a, a much worse haircut. He hasn't had anywhere near as cool of a promo as the Stallion did. You remember that? Oh, I remember. Remember right. those acting chops he had when he was laid don't, out on don't the Don't think I don't remember any of this. Guys, guys remember in like, uh, it was about 2001 or so, Shawn Michaels had been gone for a while, and then there was like one show where he came back and he decided he was going to cut his hair to here. And Dutch straight boy. all the way around, page yes. boy. God. <laughs> well, that's what this Nathan Frazier has done. I don't know what he was thinking in 2022. By the way, the former Ben Carter, for everybody out there who does not watch NXT. Yeah, Ben. Get a Ben Carter haircut. Whatever that would be. And then we had Katana Chance and Caden Carter versus Ulyssa Leone and Valentina Faraz. And uh, what's so funny? <laughs> The, the, the road twerkers. warriors, well, the road warriors, neon, uh, whatever the hell it was, shoulder pads that they had on that they came out with. So I don't know. <laughs> I I cannot figure out this Ulyssa Leone and Valentina Faraz thing here because first off, their gimmick is that they're they're they just you know they do a lot of Salsa. shaking. <laughs> they do a lot of shaking. Okay, and then right. one of them, I think it's Ulyssa Leone. Okay, this just I, I mean. Here, it's just weird. <laughs> the way she moves in the ring is like it's totally wrong. Okay, everything she does when she moves looks totally wrong, but her stuff looks good, and she can actually kind of work. Well, what do you mean by that for the the layman out there who's never been in the ring before? Just like you know, stands up too tall, and everything looks totally unnatural and awkward. But she still manages to pull everything off. I, I can't even explain it. It's just like, it's so weird. But I was watching the match, and at the beginning, it's like all they're doing is just shaking their ass and moving weird. And I'm just watching this thing going, what? But then, like, as the match kept getting, by the end, it was actually a good match. So 
I don't know. I, I just, I, I, this, it leaves me with, I just, I have no words. Except somehow they had a really good match. I don't know about really good, but it was good. And, uh, yeah, that was that. Legato del Fantasma. So, uh, old J, old BJ Ugh. gets beat up in the back. And uh, the baby faces pr- presume it's Legato del Fantasma. But we later find out that it was actually Von Wagner who was uh, sent to beat him up because he'd been uh, rubbernecking on the woman who they don't identify. That's what happened. So it ended up being two on three. And this was also a good match because you got Legato del Fantasma in there. And uh, they're they're very, very good. And Fallon Henley, I mean, she's she's not bad. And Josh Briggs is, you know, he's every big man they've ever had on this show. I mean, you can rattle off every big man tag team partner they've had from, you know, I've already forgotten all of their names, but... Uh, Tucker, you know, all these guys. He's he's exactly like all of them, but he's he's fine. He's perfectly serviceable, and this match was good. And, uh, of course, they got beaten because it was uh, it was three on two, but, you know, that match was totally fine. Solo Soko and Trick Williams, I mean, wasn't very good. Trick Williams is very, very green. And uh, the funniest thing about this match is they have Cameron Grimes on commentary. Cameron Grimes is a great promo. I have no idea what was going on on commentary. His commentary was not good at all, and the weirdest thing was, I don't even know if he was doing it on purpose or or what, but, like, he had all of these cliches, and he would begin the cliche, but the end of the cliche, he'd get it wrong. <laughs> it was just, like, one after another. I listened to this whole thing. I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> and then he got in the ring afterwards, and uh, Sokoa tried to super kick Hayes. He ducked, and so he hit Grimes. And uh, they're doing a three-way next week. We had a great segment with Nervous Malik Blade and Edris Anofi trying to give him a pep talk. These two guys are great. They are good. <laughs> but they got killed by the Viking Raiders. That was, a, that was a fun little match there. We had a vignette with Wes Lee on the beach. He's, he's all sad about what happened, but he can't tell you what happened or mention his partner's name or tell you anything. So given he could give you no information, it was a pretty good promo. And then we had uh, Mandy Rose. and <laughs> Dad went to the liquor store, never came home. That's what happened here, I guess. <laughs> Mandy Rose and Roxy was the main event. And uh, <laughs> it was it was all right. Uh, you know, Roxanne Perez, she's in the ring at this point. I mean, she was carrying this match with Mandy. I don't know what's going on with Mandy. I, I don't like to say bad things about people, but her promos and her work. Like, this is where she was years ago. There's been no improvement over all of these years. I don't know if she doesn't care or what, but she won, so they beat Roxanne, which I couldn't even believe. And after Maybe she's the, just leveled out in, her, in their system. After the break, we'll talk more. Observer Live. Ah, glad to see all the praise for my NXT reporting here, so I'll continue on. By the way, throughout the show, they've got uh, video packages for all of these women that will be in the uh, new the breakout tournaments coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh man, this tournament. <laughs> These gimmicks. Alexandra York is back. Talk about putting something out from 35 years ago. We got <laughs> Sloan Jacobs. She's going to be there. And Sloan. Uh, look at some of these other names that they've got. Kiana James. Uh, who else do they have? Alba Fire. She explains it like she has she old, spins fire around now or something like that. That's why she's at. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I I know. Well, she had a stick she was dragging across the ground, wasn't she? Uh, may have been. Anyway, after that uh, Mandy Rose match, uh, she won, and then Wendy Chu showed up, and she was gonna shoot him with a super. So I I, I actually I gotta I gotta. Yeah, please. Why please. do you guys not watch this show? So Make me. Mandy Rose to. beats Roxanne. And then as the heels are celebrating, Wendy Chu shows up in her pajamas with a super soaker. She tries to spray the heels with water, but they go running. And they stop on the ramp to go, ha ha, we're too far away for you to get us with that water. And Wendy Chu has a device and she goes, Ka-chunk! and a net falls from the ceiling to capture the heels on the ramp they attempt to get out of the ramp but it or the the whatever the net but it takes just long enough 
for Wendy Chu Jesus. and Perez to shoot them with silly string. <laughs> I'm not making a second of that up. She's got a long career in the 24-7 division coming up, doesn't she? So spring break in his next week. Nathan Frazier will spring face Grayson break-in. Waller. Have you made fun of this name yet? Eh, who cares? <laughs> Natty and Lash Legend face Cora Jade and Nikita Lyons, the feud that will never die. <laughs> the Viking Raiders versus the Creed Brothers. Cameron Grimes versus Solo Sokoa and Carmelo Hayes. Tony D'Angelo and Santos Escobar in a sit-down meeting. They're advertising that in case you're oh, thinking about skipping the show. <laughs> and Braun Breaker against Joe Gacy. You want to talk about that final segment more? Braun Breaker versus Joe Gacy would be, in the words of Cameron Grimes, a main event in any arena in this arena. (laughs) (laughs) I'm seriously going to go back and listen to that whole segment and try and figure out what was going on there. Oh, my God. Then you know, we, we should actually take a list of the people that are on this show and actually just divide them on a piece of paper on baby faces and heels and see how many names actually fill up. Because for all the things we said about heels there, and I know she's teaming with Natty, but are Lash Legend and Nikita Lyons at this point both baby faces? And at some point, does it feel like they are going to be a tag team? Well, I think Lash Legend is a heel. And uh, they may eventually, yes, you know, begrudgingly become a tag team. Can you so, imagine the team names they're going to come up with? Can I get through this two? stupid main event so I can stop talking about this show? <laughs> Sorry. Joe Gacy comes down to the ring, and he is surrounded by all of his uh, <laughs> druids. Because now Joe Gacy, and it's never been explained, now he has druids. And Harlan has vanished. We don't know where Harlan went. He disappeared. But who needs Harlan when you got two dozen druids? So he's got all these druids around in the ring, and he's cutting a promo on Braun Breaker, and he says that Braun Breaker is not medically clear to defend the title, and so he's just going to be the champion. Rick Steiner appears. Yes, Rick Steiner. And he comes down the aisle, and he gets in the ring, and uh, Joe Gacy said, you made a big mistake coming here, Rick Breaker. And all the druids get up on the apron, and so you know Rick's in big trouble because like, they're going to suck his blood next. But then the music of Braun Breaker hits, and uh, he is actually great. He comes down, he's killing druids. He's just clothesline, clothesline, boom! He's just killing all these druids, and uh, and then he gets in the ring, and Gacy lays him out, and so he's down, and then uh, his belt has been left in the aisle. So the last the last two minutes of show the show seriously. The druid at the end of the line, he picks up the belt. He gives it to the next druid. That druid gives it to the next druid. That druid gives it, and they just all the way down the aisle up into the ring, and they finally give it to Joe Gacy. And the announcer after that creeped out. that They uh, transported the belt to the ring one druid at a time. And that's how the show goes off the air. It's a guilty pleasure, everybody. You know you want to watch this pleasure. show. Pleasure. <laughs> you know you want to watch this show every week. I guess for some S and M is is pleasure. Nipple clamps are pleasure. So they. What go. are we talking about? It's a television show. There was some <laughs> decent stuff on it. Malcolm Bivens giving a dirty look to Roderick Strong. Yeah, he was great. And Ivy Nile is on the on the outside right now, and Creed Brothers. Interesting. You know, they've been playing up Malcolm Bivens as a baby face. He can do a promo either way. They haven't really defined him. It's just that people have taken to him in a certain way and the Creed brothers. It'll be interesting to see if he sticks with them, which I would like to see, or if he ends up going with Roderick Strong, since it looks like they're going to be breaking everybody up here, or at least maybe having some new new members of the Diamond Mine, possibly, if the Creed brothers leave the uh, group. So, by the way, since uh, so many people are interested in this review on the chat, that many questions have come up. Yes, Von Wagner's suspension was lifted. Why? Because he wasn't supposed to be on the show. Zion Quinn got injured, and they needed a replacement, so they they had to use Von Wagner. So they did explain his his suspension has been lifted, which was good because I forgot he was suspended because his show is just like a bunch of stuff happens. It's really not all that important, to be honest with you. 
Doesn't Robert Stone have another woman under contract, or is this mystery woman the only person that he's he's having contact with? I think you're you're remembering, uh, you know, what's her face? It got called him to SmackDown like six months ago. Oh, her? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Uh, Aaliyah. She was with what Robert Stone. She's on SmackDown. She was there this week. What do you uh, mean, what happened to her? Didn't I play the audio yesterday on this very show? No. Yes, I'm pretty sure I did. Did I not? Why did I do that with Tom? All right, with well. Filthy. Just for that, I'm going to play it for you. <laughs> oh, okay. You want to set this clip up? Well, she's backstage, and uh, she's she's uh, fawning over Ricochet. Because you see on SmackDown, remember they had that thing, and they asked, you know, randos, who has better storytelling, uh, WWE or AEW? And like 60% said WWE. Well, their storytelling is... We do an angle every six months or so, and then we just totally drop it. So, you know, about six months ago, Aaliyah was fawning over Ricochet, and then they just totally dropped it, and we never heard about it again until Friday. Now she's back fawning over Ricochet again. Are you ready to hear this? He is just, he's going to be defending the title uh, later on in the program or something like that. Here we go. Give it to me. I want some audio, huh? You know, if you guys think this live radio is easy, there's a reason I'm doing it, and none of you that are complaining are. All right, here we go. Your match last week with Jinder was incredible. Thank you. He's so big, and yeah, you were flying around the ring like it was nobody's business. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. Um, so far, you've beaten Jinder, Sammy, Angel, and Humberto. That's true, that's true. How? And what is next? Honestly, this this is just the beginning. It is. I've said it before. Beaten. 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 You know who else did that last night? Uh, uh not 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 Roxy, uh, but uh what's her face? Oh, um, Mandy? No, no, no. Uh, d- damn it. JC Jane. GG no, Dolan. JC Jane. No, not, not You're God. killing me here. Yeah, this Describe whole the show person. has been killing us. Small black hair, uh Cora Jade. Cora Jade. Cora Jade uh, also has that same uh, inflection or whatever it would be with the how she says things. B N B N B N. Jensen Boomer. Let's look at some of this uh, feedback here. I'm sure, people have got a lot to say, probably about NXT 2.0. Did you know, so former Kayla Inlay, who was that worker who was oh my my favorite Kayla Inlay. She was, uh, she has a new gimmick where she looks like a businesswoman. Is that who that was? Yeah, apparently. Oh, I got it. I was trying to figure out who that was. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's a The legendary person. York Foundation. Another thing that looked. That's who you were talking about. Yes, when I you take it. a picture in a magazine and you see Terry Taylor and Alexandra York and everybody else who was in that, Thomas Rich, Tommy Rich. When you see that group on paper, Ricky Morton, you go, hey, that's that may have been kind of cool. If you lived through it, it, it wasn't really. It wasn't. This person says, I looked NXT for comedy at this point. Just make me laugh. I'll be fine with the show. Give me Persian indie having, quote, real conversations. Give me JB and BJ, Malik oh, and Edris. <laughs> that hey, was some okay Carmelo. wrestling, and I'm good. They have people on there where you it's you see it. Is Tiffany Stratton, you got me. You know, Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes, especially, you know, Mello is going to be a star, should be, hopefully, knock on wood, a star in this business. Legato's all fantastic. I mean, there is stuff there worth viewing every week. It's just you. This is, for, I guess, for modern times, this is as close as to as what we have to those syndicated shows from our youth 35 years ago on Superstars and Challenge and Main Event and Worldwide and all those sorts of things where you do really have to pluck out <laughs> what is good and the rest of it you just kind of have to forget and put in the background, and that's what WWE is hoping you're going to do with these shows. This person here says, Brian, you should talk about some real news, like the fact that Shop AEW now has a cake and violence shirt available for sale. Well, I gotta, like cake and you violence. You got to jump on that sort of thing. Whose is that? I do too. Hmm. Brian, I got my hair cut in high school because of Shawn Michaels' Dutch man do. Dead serious, and I can prove it. 
Oh my god. I don't please. need it proven. I believe no, you. I want it proven and is it okay that we show the people this? And then he he uh, resp- he also added here, I immediately regretted it by the way. Uh, so that's probably yeah. a no. That's uh But if you want to, please. This person here says, if every pay-per-view is in a stadium, how do you tell your audience that WrestleMania is all glitz and glamorous if every show in a stadium? Well, because WrestleMania is two days. Oh, God. That's the hook. <laughs> and there will be more people there, obviously. And but there's going to be that's more shows difference. with two days. Just watch. Let's see. Anytime Brian says anything positive... Oh, he's got a uh, animated GIF here. Why are you sending me a text animated GIF? I've heard a lot about this. I've not seen it. Uh... Takeshida versus Brandon Cutler on Dark Elevation was the greatest match, this person says, of Brandon Cutler's entire career. <laughs> Please go out of your way to watch this match if you know what is best for you. Or just watch one of the many Kanosuke Takeshita matches over the last several years where he showed himself to be one of the best young stars in all of professional wrestling anywhere. I don't think you need BC for that. See what we got here. Oh, uh, Kaz Fujita. Let me just throw this one in here because got COVID. Another and, uh, COVID issue. Vacated. Yeah. And there are people who don't necessarily believe that, but you know. They don't believe that he got COVID? Mm, conveniently. What, he didn't Sad. want to drop the title? I don't know, that's what a lot of people would like to Well, to he believe. did drop the title. Because <laughs> you get no, stripped. He, no, he was stripped of the title. Well, yeah. <laughs> It'll take the you lose it and you never actually lose it looking at the lights. So I'd be disgusted. I would be. I'd no. be disgusted. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Number VB also of WrestlingObserver.com. Speaking of stadium shows, SummerSlam, Nissan Stadium, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, the show is currently set up for 34,434, according to WrestleTix. They have sold 19,949 at tickets. And uh, the show is a long way away. It's July 30th, so uh, April. Can you stop chomping on the air, dude? April, you're, you're muted for a second. Uh, we got uh, July 30th, so three months. And at this point... They are selling 231 tickets a day, so it is drastically slowed down after the pre-sale. But uh, presumably, when we get some uh, when we get some matches announced, et cetera, et cetera, uh, I'm sure they hope it will pick up again. But that is the update on SummerSlam right now. And uh, bro, what are you eating on the you air? You see this? You see this, Brian? Somebody, somebody likes me. Okay, somebody liked me enough to send me a whole box of various. Insomnia cookies. Wow. And you know who that person was? It wasn't you. It was our fine producer, Dom. <laughs> well, a Dom's, real friend and hero. Dom's got heat with me now since you decided to eat them during the final segment of the show and chomp. That's what that button's for, everybody. Anyway, hey, listen, tonight, AW Dynamite. I will be recapping that show with Dave for Wrestling Observer Radio tonight, plus all of the news. Tomorrow, we will recap it here on this program. And uh, that is the plan. So we're going to wrap it up here for today. I think Mike, as always, I guess Dom, callers and listeners, Twitch homies, those of you that actually pay for YouTube. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.